It's here, everybody. It's Derby Week. Love it, love it. It is happening this Saturday. Norwich City against Ipswich Town at Carrow Road. Always a game that gets the, the pulses racing, uh, whether you're playing, watching, doing the job that we do. And we thought that we'd catch up with some guys who've not just played in it, but scored in it, scored memorable goals in it as well. And um, that leads me to introduce a man who needs no introduction among Norwich fans, uh, Mr Ewan Roberts himself. Ewan, how are you? I'm not too bad, Con. I've had a busy, busy Easter. Um, watched lots of games. Um, can't complain. Kept me out of the pub, I guess. So, no, all, all good, mate. Sadly, and I'm gutted, I won't be there on, on Saturday. I'm off to Colchester because Wrexham are coming to town uh, with uh, the Hollywood stars. So, I'm going to be busy on, on Saturday. But no doubt, I'll be going down the A140 and there will be cars and buses full of <laughs> Ipswich fans coming up to the fine city. Yeah, and I'm sure if they knew you were in the car going the other way, they'd give you a nice welcome, <laughs> wouldn't they? <laughs> um, let's let's talk a little bit about this fixture. It's clearly a game that you've played in and that you've uh, got really some fond, I'm sure, some some not so fond memories in. Um, you've played in in lots of derbies throughout your career. How how does the Norwich Ipswich one compare? I, I won't ask you to rank it, but how does it how does it feel to play in a game? Because I I will never do it. The people watching probably I hope they do, but they'll probably never do it either. What what's it like to step onto the pitch on on, on, a, on an East Anglian derby? As, as a player, you can't. As a player, you can't really enjoy them until you know you've got the result that you're looking for. Until you know you've you've won the game, or at least you've not lost the game. Um, as 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 a fan, you know the importance of them. As a player, you sort of the the week leading up to. Oh, I wouldn't even say the week, Connor. I, I think the the weeks leading up to to the derby. That's all people want to talk to you about. I mean, I've I've been to the gym over the last few days. There's loads of Norwich fans there. That's all they want to want to talk to you about. What do I think? What my prediction is? They are massive games. You know, I I was really fortunate. I did really well in in um, in, in in derby games. I mean, the first one was Huddersfield and Bradford, which maybe not might not be the biggest, but you know, I I was fortunate. I, I scored in 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 that derby. Then I went to Leicester, um, scored my first ever hat trick in the derby against. Derby of all people, of, of all teams. Uh, we played them in probably the biggest derby that I've been involved in in the playoff final in, I think it was 94, which we won 2-1. Um, I've played in the Black Country derby, which is a, a passionate affair. There's a lot of bad blood between West Brom and, and, and Wolves. And I've, I've got to say, even though there's 40-odd miles separate Norwich and Ipswich, it's very similar to the Cardiff Swansea scenario. Mm -hmm. Very, very similar in miles in, in, in miles separating the two. But I tell you what, there's no loss, look, there's no love lost whatsoever. I mean, it's passionate, it's intense, there's bad blood, there's bad feeling. And I hate using the word hatred, but I think there's a lot of hatred as well that goes into this game. Uh, well, as you say, you've played in so many derbies. I'm sure you came to Norwich and maybe had a perception of that derby, as people do from the outside looking at it. Was it was it different to the perception that you had in it when you when you played in it and you experienced it, or was, or was it all. kind of what you were expecting? Not not at all. I I'd, I'd watched so many sort of uh, East Anglian derbies on on Sky because they're always on Sky. I think they tended to be on a on a Friday night. So I'd watched a good few before I, I signed for the club. So I knew I knew what they meant. You know, I'm, I'm I'm not daft. I know what local derbies are. I know what they're about. I know what they mean to to people, especially supporters. So I was under no illusions when I went into my first East Anglian derby what it meant, um, and I have to say it, it did disappoint. No, it certainly didn't. I guess I guess the one that probably you get spoken to um, about is is the one. Thousand the the two goals at, at Portman Road. I'm sure that's that's probably the one that people still speak to you now. So what what are your memories of of, of scoring in that game? Not just scoring, but scoring an excellent goal. Um, uh, by by the way, um, to score twice in a in a derby, something obviously is is quite a select club of people that have done it. John Rowe joined it this season. I mean that that must have been really special to to, oh, to achieve, particularly away from home. Uh, absolutely. I mean, the one thing in my seven years that I would have loved to have done 
in my Norwich career was I would have loved to have scored the winning goal at Carrow Road. But that sadly, that wasn't to be. Um, I mean, I remember missing a sitter. And I think it was my first appearance at, uh, at Portman Road. I think it might have been my first derby because I missed the 5 one in my... In good one to miss. Nine, because I th- I, it was a good one to miss. It was a good I had. <laughs> I think I had a bad show. I didn't travel. Um, I didn't go down to Portman Road. We lost 5-1. So I, I was blameless in the performance <laughs> and the result. Um, but I, I remember playing in a, in a game, I think it must have been a Tuesday night and Darren Eads put a great ball from the left hand side and I've slid in and all I've got to do is sort of guide the ball from about two yards out make decent contact guide it goalwards and I've scored and it would have been in front of all their fans where they sort of congregate behind as, as where you if you're in the dugout if you look to your left behind that goal there I, I can't remember I, I'm not sure what the stand is called anyway I missed my knee went into the post I pretended that I was injured, even though I wasn't. I was just more embarrassed about the chance that I missed. But I think we might have won the game 1-0 with a Craig Bellamy header. Anyway, I sort of, I, I've gone off, uh, I've, I've gone off on a, on a, on a tangent. Yeah, the, the, the two goals were special. I mean, the second was probably the best goal I scored in an orange shirt. I mean, we were having a, we were having a poor season. They were flying. They they were they were going for promotion. Uh, they were flying high. No one gave us a chance. I think it was Brian Hamilton's first game in charge as manager. Obviously, we knew Brian's background to a degree. He was a bit of an Ipswich Town legend, which sort of didn't go down too well with 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 the lads. And I tell you what, it was probably one of the best performances that we we put out that season. I remember Mike Milligan in midfield was outstanding. As you say, I mean, I got the two goals. We kept the clean sheet. The first had an element of luck about it, I have to say, even though had it not taken the wicked deflection that it did, I still think it would have ended in the top corner of Richard Wright's net. But the second one, as you say, was a was a really special goal. I mean, it came from a, a an Ipswich corner kick. Big Marshy came out, gathered the ball, Threw it to Paul Dalglish on the right wing. Daggers sort of, he was he was the quickest thing under the sun. Used his pace, and for once he put a good ball in. And not too often I would say that about Daggers. Um, he, 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 I think he took after his mum with with the pace that he had, but he didn't have any of his dad's ability. But anyway, he put a, <laughs> put a great ball in, and you know, sort of, I did the rest, which I think surprised me. But I think surprised a lot of other people as well. But yeah, it was. I mean, it was a magnificent moment. I, I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it, and I couldn't wait after I'd scored to sort of run the length of the pitch to celebrate with the Norwich fans. I was going to say, when you score a goal like that in a, in a derby, is at what point does it sink in about kind of what what you've done? Because I, I, as you say, I imagine when you're in the game, it's focus and you, you're able maybe to, even though you know the magnitude of it, you can block it out to an extent. But when you score, is it because because I can tell you, if if Norwich uh, or in previous derbies, if they've scored or if they win, it's it's relief. What I feel, it's not really joy. It's just oh, thank God that's over and. What I, I can imagine scoring a goal in their cake completely that's, different. Completely honestly, different. Colin, that's 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 the same as players. Um, mm. You know, at least as a player, you can sort of influence what goes on. You can influence the result. If if you're a supporter, or if you're a as you are a journalist that works in Norwich, I mean, I mean your hands are tied. You you can't do anything about the result. You know, you've got to sit there and 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 watch what unfolds. To be fair, as a player, you can have a say in in what happens on the pitch. I mean, I knew at the time it was a good goal. I knew at the time what those two, because of my previous experiences in derby games, I I knew what those two goals meant to Norwich fans. But I think it's a little bit later down the line, um, like I'm talking to you now, because I've, I've, I've scored the winning goal against Ipswich Town. And it's when 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 I'm asked the question, my favourite goal that is right up there has to be probably number one, um, and 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 people will always sort of remember, you know, because I don't want to get ninety seven goals for the club, they always remember those two, especially the second one. 
Yeah, well, this is this is the point. I mean, I, I'm not saying this to to make you feel old. I promise. But I, I was I was a month old when that game took place. Uh, <laughs> you sorry, have, I don't. You have I don't yeah, I don't. I don't that's how. But I, I, is that all you were? Yeah, I was. Yeah, but I, I say uh, a month exactly. But I, I say that just because, like, I I, rem- I I remember those goals. Like, I've seen them so, particularly the second one. I've seen it so many times, and it feels like it's kind of survived generations. So the fact we're here, 24 years later, speaking about it shows about shows how special it is to score in a derby and, and and just what an achievement it is and 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 I guess kind of gets you as close I guess to immortality as you can possibly get because it survives generations and people talk about it for, for long periods of time and I, I guess the reverse of that it, it sort of stands at the test of time people will never forget about it because it's it's against Ipswich you know I scored a, I scored my first hat trick for Leicester against Derby I scored a hat trick for Wolves in the Black Country Derby at the Hawthorns, I think I'm the only I'm the only ever Wolves player to to achieve that. Um, I scored a, a brace down at Portman Road. Um, yeah, I, I Derby's were Not a bad record. Quite, yeah, they, weren't a bad record. I scored twice at Valley Parade for Huddersfield to come back from two 0 down to draw two two. So yeah, Derby games were. Work. And, and Ipswich was they were sort of a lucky side for me. I remember scoring twice at Portman Road for Watford in my early days. I remember scoring twice at Leicester when we lost three two there. So I'd always sort of done well at Portman Road, and yeah, gladly sort of when I played for Norwich, it followed the trend. Maybe that's why they signed you. We'll never, we'll never ever know. <laughs> um, look, going into to, to this to this weekend's game, then it's, it feels like every derby that comes because of the record that Norwich City have in, in, at the moment, and if they manage to avoid defeat this time, it, it will be 15 years, which is a remarkable achievement since they they were last beaten by Ipswich Town. I think it's I don't think they've won at Carrow Road since 2006, so it's an even even longer record. Feels like there's there's more and more pressure, but. Because of what the both of the teams are, are fighting for, obviously one automatic promotion, one trying to get into the playoffs. This feels like probably the biggest derby since the the playoff semi final. Do you, do, you, do you think that's fair? It feels. I, I mean, they're big games anyway, but this this feels particularly big. Let me just open the door. Just go open, open the door for me, sir. <laughs> no, you're all right. Um, I th- I think it's it's wide up there. Mm. I mean. I look back at the um, the playoff final in 2015, and yeah, that that was massive for obvious reasons. Uh, playoff semi final in 2015, that was massive for obvious reasons. That the prize was was huge. Um, I mean, this one in a in a league game, I think is the biggest that I can remember. Uh, you know, I can't remember a bigger East Anglian derby. Going back years and years and years, mm. because you know they're, they're flying high on 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 the top of the championship. They're within touching distance of Premier League football, back to back promotions. Norwich are fighting for a, a place in 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 the playoffs. There's pressure on both teams. I think, and people say there's no pressure on Ipswich because no one really expected them to be where they are i think when you're top of the pre- top of the championship with six games to go i think there's massive pressure on you because that expectancy and, and their fans will probably bat that off um but I, I i think when you're that close when you've done as well as what they have done and they've been magnificent this season i think i think coming into this game because of the record as well as you say i think it's nine nine appearances at Carroll road where when they they've they've failed to win, there's been a few draws in there, granted, um, and I, I don't buy it when people say to me that well that the, the dressing room won't really know that they will know that you mm. know that you've got two boys that play for their their side in Wolfenden and Harrison Clark who were at Twitch through and through, who are Ipswich boys, they will know the history of of this fixture. They will know how poorly their team have done over Norwich in the last 15 season and they will be desperate to to put that right and that adds pressure you know Norwich on the other hand um, had a had a poor afternoon on on um, on Easter Monday uh, uh, at Filbert Street but in, in in a way it was quite a good afternoon because 
all the other teams below them lost. So the gap didn't close. You've got a game less to play. Um, home form's been unbelievable. Was it seven consecutive wins? Haven't lost at Car Road in in their last 12, 10 of which they've won. You know, Josh Sargent scored in his last, what, nine appearances at Car Road. So there's some, I mean, there's some, there's some magnificent sort of statistics going into this fixture. I mean, they've won eight of their last nine or, or something ridiculous like that. But I do think probably Norwich go into it as favourites because of their home form. Let's hope so, Ewan. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. And uh, in part two of the chat, we're going to be speaking to another Norwich City legend that I think might uh, might be recognisable to a few faces out there. This uh, this particular fixture brings us uh, to this man on my right who uh, who needs no introduction, Mr. Darren Huckabee, um, someone who also scored a winning goal in a game against Ipswich Town back in September 2005, was involved in plenty of derby tussles over the year as well. Um, Hucks, I mean, your, your memories of, of this fixture, I'm intrigued, and I asked you a similar question. I mean, your your memories of the derby generally, was it because you, you've obviously come from the outside and, and been dropped into a, to a derby as a player? Was it everything that you expected? Because I'm sure from the outside, there's maybe a perception of what it's like. Was it w- what you kind of thought it would be like when you when you first played it, Mon? Uh, yeah, I think obviously played in Coventry against Villa, you know, Man United against Man City, uh, Forest against Derby. So I've been in a few, but this was you know, what I expected. It's uh, two teams that you know, go after each other from the start and you know, I expect nothing different on Saturday. Did did you enjoy derby games more than average games? I mean, I, you, I think people thought of you as a kind of a big game player anyway. Did did you did you feel different heading into derby games? No, I think you you knew how important it was to the fans more than anything. It's it, it is a game for the fans, and obviously Saturday's got a bit more relevance because it's how important it is for both sets of fans, but also both teams. So, you know, this is probably the, the biggest one for a long, long time. And I expect us to, you know, really have to go after it, switch. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a massive game. I mean, in terms of 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 playing in it as as a player, I mean, I obviously I've never done it, and unless something goes badly wrong, I, I will never do it. And obviously, people watching this have haven't done it either. What what is it like? What what do you need to have to play? Not just playing a derby, but but winning a derby. Is there a certain sort of skill set that you felt a team needed to kind of get over the over the line in in, in derby games? I think you've got to be resilient first and foremost. You've got to not panic, which is a big thing. You can't throw the game away in the first 10 minutes by doing something stupid. But you've also got to have a belief in your teammates and we're very good at home. They're, they've been decent all season. So, like I say, it's it's a big game. But I think you've just got to have players who you believe can win games. You know, that's what that's what both sets of teams, both teams have got, to be honest. So, it's the up to your big players to step up because that's why they're the big, your big players. Uh, yeah, ab- absolutely, and and it's it's uh, you and kind of I asked him kind of whether he thought this was this was the biggest derby since the the playoff semi final just because of what what's riding on it in terms of both teams. He felt it it probably was the biggest derby in a while because of of what the the teams are playing for. And I I guess from a Norwich perspective, I'm not saying this in kind of a you know in a in a sort of pointing at Ipswich, but it's it's, it's kind of nice to have that feeling on a derby again, isn't it? Because it hasn't really been there for a few years because of what they've been through as a as a football club. Yeah, it's probably it's probably more important than the one you know the last time we we played in the in the playoffs, just because you know they are on for automatic promotion, and we we are not definitely in the playoffs. So I think it's a it's a bigger game than that, especially the way both team seasons have gone. You know they've been pretty good all season. We started to get pretty good after after Christmas. You know now we're both we're both kind of hitting form at the right time. So. You know, literally the six games going, you know, nothing certain for both teams. Let's be honest, nothing certain. You know, they're not certain to go up, and we're not certain to get in the playoffs. So, both teams have got a lot to lose this game. Does it does it make a difference playing in a derby and being at home than, than than being away? Is there a real difference in sort of experience in 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 that as a as a player? Obviously, I'm sure everyone would, would prefer to play at home in them, but does it change how you have to approach it? Do you have to be a little bit more? I don't know. Do you have to attack a little bit more in a, in a home derby because there is that expectation from supporters? I think I think derby games. I think home and away goes out the window a little bit. Mm. It's what happens on the day. But for us, you know, we've got to be on the front foot. We've got to be on the front foot. We've got to go after them from the start. Probably what we didn't do against Leicester. You know, we got went, went one up and then we kind of was a bit passive. 
And I don't think we believe we could beat Leicester. But, you know, our fans expect us to go and get something again. It's, it's rich. You no, know, it's probably not early on the season where they were definitely the, the form team and they were the favourites. But we're at home and we've, you know, our form's just been just as good as theirs. Especially at home, you know, we've been, our own form's been uh, very, very good. So, but it is up to us to go and put them on the back foot because what we've seen from them, even when they don't play well, you know, I don't think they played that well against Southampton the other day. And mm. for 70% of the game, they were second best. But what they have got, they've got resilience, they've got a, a will to win, they've got a will to get played forward, even when things aren't going well. So, you know, we, we know what's coming, but they've also know that we've got a few threats that can, can score goals. Yeah, and I guess uh, from, from Norwich's perspective, it's great to be heading into this derby with the home form as it is. That you know, you know, you've we've you've watched them all season, but they've almost been like a different team home and away. So I think there'll there'll be obviously a lot of supporters, I'm sure, who take comfort in the fact that this is this is a home game as opposed to maybe the the Portman Road game, which felt a little bit more about just getting through it un, unscathed and obviously with with that record still intact. So this feels like a real opportunity for Norwich to cash in on obviously all of that momentum that they've been building at home over recent months. What I would say is, though, against the probably the, f- the four best teams in the league, which are, you know, Leeds, mm. Southampton, uh, Leicester, and Ipswich, you know, we haven't we didn't play that well at home. You know, Southampton, we sat off and we, we were pretty lucky to go get anything out of the game. Against Leicester, we've lost twice. You know, in Southampton, we, we've got one, but uh, you know, we we, we had some, about thirty percent possession. So, this is a big test for us. You know, I expect us to be some of the teams that have come to Car Road. You know, we should be aiming for the top six at a bare minimum. So, yeah. we have got to get something out of this game. There's no doubt about it. You know, it's got to be a win or a draw for us to push on this season. We, we need to win this game. Yeah, absolutely. And as as a as a player, what are your what are your memories of this fixture? Obviously, we've got you on to speak about kind of winning, scoring a winning goal in the derby, which you managed to do in in two thousand and five in in that one 0 win at Portman Road. Um, how special is that to do as as a player? It's it's obviously special to score goals at any point, but in in a game of that magnitude, I'm sure it's it's something that people still speak to you now. What what was that? What was that like for you? What are your memories of of that day? Well, I I, I think I you know I scored away from home, which was to win 1-0 but I also mm. you know we, we beat them at, at, at Carrow Road Malky scored two and I got kind of a deflected yeah. cross which I'm counting as a goal so <laughs> you just got to believe you just got to believe in your teammates you've got to, you've got to be on the front foot that's the most important thing for me we've, we've got to get straight at we've got to get straight at Ipswich that's what I believe you know we've got players that can hurt them you know we need Ashley Barnes to be his nasty and do what he does and we need Sargent to produce a good is it is it worse for you watching derbies than than having played in them? It's it's that control element, isn't it? You can impact a, a game when you're playing in them, when you're watching them. So you, you're sort of like the rest of us. You're you're helpless to it. Is is it worse uh, having been a player to watch derbies now than it was to play in them? Uh, no, yeah, everyone, everyone wants to be playing in these games. You know, it's simple as that. But watching it's the next best thing. You know, you, you turn into a fan, and it's up to the. It's up to the fans to get real if well, they won't need to. The fans know how important it is. And it's really is down to down to the fans to lift the, the team. But also the team needs to put shift in. That's what we need to see. So uh, uh, we've obviously got to talk about Ipswich. You're somebody that they they love to hate down there and, and their fan base, particularly on, on social media and, and, the, and, and the role that you play on there. Um but we, we have we have to speak about their season. How impressed have you been with them? Because you know we we all know. I mean, you've played the game, but we've 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 all watched the game. We know how difficult it is to kind of have a season that they're having after promotion. What have you made? What have you made of uh, of them? Begrudgingly, of course. Yeah, begrudgingly, uh, they've had an excellent season. You know, the, the table never lies. I don't care what anyone says. The, people said they've been a bit lucky. You know, they, they have had the rubber green at times, but. You know, I saw Southampton and they were chucking six or seven men forward in the last couple of minutes. And basically, they deserve to, wear, to be where they are. Like, you know, if we deserve, if we get to the playoffs, it's because we deserve to be. Yeah. But they, you know, they've been excellent all season. You know, but it's up to us to try and try and stop that. That's the most important thing now. We've got to try and stop them winning the league. Because I'm going to get a hell of a lot of stick on Twitter if they, uh, if they do manage to <laughs> go up uh, top two. So, yeah. They, they deserve to be where they are. The manager's been excellent, and and as, as a as a group of players, they've exceeded what people thought. Probably. Uh, just finally, then Hux. I mean, I, w- I won't um, p- 
push you down to a prediction or anything like that. But as a game, how do you kind of see it panning out? Do you do you expect to see Norwich again? They got a lot of stick at Leicester for maybe being um, the the way that they approached that game. They need to be more front footed in in this game, don't they? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's down to us. It's down to us to set the agenda. It's down to us to to really push the game, go, go after them. I think if we sit back, we'll get beat. You know, because they they put too many men forward. You know, it's up to us. We've got to put them on the back foot. We've got to be aggressive. We've got to, you know, get Sergeant running the channels. And then when it comes to make a few blocks, we've got to make a few blocks. But it's going to be a tough game. They're, they're top of the league for a reason. It's simple as that. And last but certainly not least on our journey through uh, Derby timelines, we, we come to this man on my right, Mr. Bradley Johnson, arguably scorer of one of the most memorable Derby goals, certainly in, in the last decade or so. It was uh, it was some strike and remembered very fondly. Bradley, thank you so much for, for joining me um, to, to look back on this. I guess um, you, you, let's let's start as I start with the other two. So I'll start maybe in the same place with you. Obviously, you had maybe the, the, the pleasure of, of coming into to Norwich from being on the outside. So I'm sure like probably the other guys before you and everyone else in that dressing room, maybe there was a perception of what Norwich versus Ipswich was like. So when you stepped into that fixture, was it kind of everything that you thought it would be? I'm sure you've played in other derbies. So was, was it kind of what you expected as a game and as a rivalry? Yeah, it was. Um, I think for the first two two or three years at my time in Norwich, we was in the Premier League, so we didn't really play against them. I've, I've heard of the rivalry before and um, the lads sort of, spoke about, I think it got more spoken about um, the season that we knew we were going down. Um, you know, obviously we were gutted that we, were, we got relegated from the Premier League, but, you know, the championship fixture, the first fixture that uh, we all looked at when it came out was the Ipswich game. Um, and that's what everyone spoke about. And um, I think, yeah, that season when I was in the championship with with uh, Norwich was the first time we ever thought about it. And then, you know, yeah, the build-up to the to the game, every, when, whenever the fixtures come out, um, that's where everyone spoke about was when the derby was and then the build up to it the lead up to it the weeks before the game um, you know I think we probably made played about three games before uh, we played Ipswich but everyone was talking about the Ipswich game and I'm thinking we've got three more games to play before <laughs> we play them so I knew how big and um, and how the rivalry was but yeah the weeks leading up to it especially the, the, my first derby the week leading up to it I think just being out in, a, in in and around the city, everyone spoke about. It. That's all everyone could speak about. And um, yeah, when I when I did play against them, you could you could tell the the rivalry was good. It was a fierce game, and you know, I'm, I think I'm I'm fortunate enough to say I'm, I never lost the derby, so uh, I've got that record as well. Yeah, and it's what, what a great record that that is to have, and obviously it's a record that still stands to this day, which is uh, yeah. which is which is remarkable in terms of uh, Norwich's um, dominance against Ipswich over, over this last decade or so. But I mean, it's interesting what you said there because it's, it's something I guess the players will be experiencing this week in terms of it's a game that has so much riding on it from fans' perspective. It's been spoken about for weeks, and as players, do you have to manage that? Do you almost have to kind of not listen to that kind of stuff? How, how, how is the, the build-up to it? How, how much can you sort of allow yourself to, to feel the rivalry, so to speak? No, look, I think, being honest with you, everyone feels it, everyone knows it, everyone talks about it. And, um, you know, as players, um, I was in a squad who players really cared about the club and we knew how much it meant to the club. Um, you know, I think many fans would say they'd rather beat Ipswich than get promoted uh, during that season. But... Um, no, we knew as players, we knew what it meant to the fans, we knew what it meant to the club, and uh, we had a great bunch of, of lads who wanted to work hard for the club, so we knew what it was about. You couldn't really block it out because everywhere you went in Norwich, that's all everyone spoke about. But um, yeah, we had, as I said there, we had a good, good group of core uh, players who worked hard for the club, and we knew what it meant, and we knew how much we had to put into them, them games, especially the, 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 the derby games. I'm sure you've played in other derbies throughout, throughout your career, but there is a uniqueness to it, I guess, because it's it's kind of a county-wide thing, isn't it? It's it's almost Norfolk, Suffolk, yeah, as well as Norwich. Yeah, it's, I've, I've played in, yeah. It's, I've never, yeah. My, it's one, I, I thought it was around the corner, but yeah, going down there, <laughs> like an hour and a half away. But uh, yeah, and that's, I think that's what makes it even more unique. You know, it's not rivalries as you're on the doorstep where I've I've been, you know, I've, I've played for Derby and, you know, Derby and Nottingham, that's a, dar that's a Derby and you, you're literally on each other's doorsteps. But... Norwich Ipswich is just a bit further away, and I think that's what makes it more uh, a bit that more un unique. That it's it's not literally on the doorstep, but the rivalry. Again, you walk around the city and, and you know what it means to the to the fans. 
Mm, absolutely. Let's uh, let's let's talk about that that goal then, and and, and that day in, in in 2015. I mean, the fact I guess that you're you're being asked to speak about it nearly 10 years later shows how significant a moment it was. But um, did it did it dawn on you when you struck it when it went in just how big that would become scoring against Ipswich? I mean, for you, it, it's almost made you uh, you know it's it's connected you to Norwich fans forever. That must be a really nice feeling and something that you've you've carried around with great pride over the last 10 years, even even sort of beyond Norwich. Yeah, no, I think it's a goal that obviously sits well in the memories of the Norwich fans who, who was at the game and who were with us that season. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a goal that's, like you said, there, it's connected me to the club. But I think I, I, I've done more than that uh, for the club to just be connected by one goal, hopefully. But um, no, it's a goal that every year um, it pops up um, and I always repost it and I see it all over social media. Um, but yeah, it's one of them goals that, you know, as soon as it left my foot, I knew it was in the back of the net and... You know, I was in good scoring uh, form that, that year and I scored many goals and that one has got to be up there with the, the best one I scored that season. Um, and yeah, you know, to, just to be reminded of it every year and, you know, coming up with games whenever they play it, which is always shown on the TV and stuff. So, yeah, it's a memorable goal for me and I'm sure it would be a memorable for a lot of fans who were there and seen it. Yeah, yeah, and as you mentioned, you scored a lot of great goals in in that season in particular. But that one, in in terms of the way you struck it and the power that you got behind it, I mean, t technically that 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 must have been really so sweet, I guess, for you as a player because that's almost like perfect technique, isn't it, to to strike a ball in the way that you did? Yeah, it's, it's you know, you know, you know, when you when you hit it as sweet as that and you see it going the back of the net, it's it's that better better feeling. But you know, it could have went it could have went anywhere. It could have went over the stands. I hit that hard. Um, but yeah, you know, I scored a lot of goals that year, and you know, when you when you score goals like that, that you put your full power in, and it, it hits the back of it, it's a it's a relief, you know. Um, and to do it against your local rivals as well, you know, everything right in that game, um, and to go on to win the game, it makes it that more special. Yeah, exactly. I was going to ask you sort of your memories of the day more widely because I'm sure it's it's the goal that kind of dominates it. But it, it must have been, as you said, you never lost against Ipswich. You obviously had the the playoffs as well. I mean, all, all of all of all of those must be really positive memories of of this fixture in particular. Yeah, I I, I don't think I've had a uh, a bad memory in, in the fixture. Um, you know, the, the the best one was the playoffs when we when we uh, won at home. Um, I think when we got the penalty, they went down to ten men. Wes scored the penalty. I think that was the best. Derby, I played in a personal, you know, as, as a team, you know, the overall riding feeling that, you know, going to their place, drawing 1-1 one, one, and then bringing them back to Carroll Road and, and getting the, the victory to see us through to Wembley. I think that was the best derby that I enjoyed the most. Um, but yeah, as on a personal note, obviously it's going to be the, the one that I scored in. But you know, yeah, I played in, I think I played in four um, derbies and, you know, never lost none. Um, so I've got a good record against them and hopefully the boys can carry that on uh, on the weekend. I was I was going to say when, when there is a record like that, and obviously it was it was lesser when when you played. It was it was fewer years involved. But is that something that's in your mind as a player? Are you aware of that? Are you conscious of that? Is there almost a, a need internally if you go, oh goodness me, you can't be the team that loses, you know? And, and that that only increases, doesn't it, as the years go on? I suppose. Yeah, it does. But I don't think it will be in the players' minds. Um, you know, there's a lot other stuff riding on the game than just the, the you know the, the record of, of how long they've been us. So I'm, I'm sure they'd be thinking. You know, it's what you're going for promotion, and so in Norwich trying to get in the playoffs. So there's a lot more riding on the game, just just going into it, thinking about we can't lose this because of that record. Um, but no, you you go into the game, you know what it means, you know what it means to the fans, both sets of fans. You know, everyone wants to win the game, and I'm sure the lads are. I went into every derby wanting to win it, regardless of what was riding on it, um, and it gives you that more spice that it is your local rivals, but. You want to go into every game and, and do as best as you can. And I'm sure the boys will want to do that on, on Saturday and come away with a result. And hopefully they do. What What is the key to being successful on, on Derby Day? Because as much as it's about, obviously, the fire and the passion of it, I guess there's a coolness as well that you need, isn't there? There's a composure that you need to channel that sort of feelings and those emotions in the right way. Yeah, that's that's it. You need to control your emotions. Um, you can get caught up in the emotion of the game. You just got to play the game and, and not the emotions, you know. Um, first tackles are important. Uh, that always lifts the crowd. I, I knew that. Um, but no, going into the game, you just got to keep a cool head. As as my dad used to tell me, play with fire in your belly and uh, ice in your head. So uh, no no silly bookings in the first half. Don't give the, the ref an excuse. But yeah, play the game and 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 not get caught up in, in the emotions. 
I'm sure the emotions will be running through the, the lads before, but as soon as that whistle goes, you know, it's, it's games and you've got to block out all the noise from the outside and just concentrate on your own game and, and hopefully come away with a win. What, what, what do you make of this derby in particular? And it's, it, like I say, you've been involved in some big ones, arguably the biggest one, uh, potentially, uh, well, there was a semi-final back in the 80s, but potentially since then um, in, in that playoff semi-final. I think there's a lot of people looking at, at this game feeling it's probably the biggest since that game that, that you were involved in. It, it feels really significant for both sides because of obviously what, what they're playing for. How, how are you kind of viewing it as, as we sort of 48 hours or so from, from kickoff today? I think, yeah, it's a big... Big game for, for both teams. You know, Ipswich, you know, you can't fault them. They're flying the season. Um, they've done similar to what, you know, Norwich done before I signed you know, the, the League One campaign where they got double promotion. You know, they're a team who have been together for a couple of years now. Um, you know, the manager's been there a while and they're playing some good football. They've got a real solid, you know, core team and they've been together for a few years and you can see that now in the way they're playing. And, um, you know, they're doing brilliant this season. Um Norwich have had a bit of an up, up-down season to the start, um, but they find themselves where they are um, and they can make the playoffs and I'm, I'm sure they'll be fighting for that. They want to. Um, so, yeah, roles are reversed, whereas normally it's it's sort of when I was at Norwich, uh, we were above Ipswich at the time when we were playing them. So sort of roles are reversed. Norwich are flying. And um, I mean, Ipswich are flying at the moment, you know, uh, find themselves up the league and Norwich want to be there. So, yes, it's going to be... Uh, an interesting derby but you know form and and where you are in the table goes out the window when you play derby games it doesn't matter where you are in the league it's all about who turns up on the day and who wants it more and and just finally i mean i was going to ask you about playing one at carrow road because obviously you've, you've experienced playing at both you know in both stadiums is, is there a yeah. difference when you're at home in a derby because everything else seems to go out the window does does having your home support there is that must be i don't know does it give you a boost is it something that, yes. that yeah yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's massive, I think. You know, when you want when you go away from home, you want to you want to quiet in the crowd. Um, so you want to slow down the game and and play at your tempo. But when you're at home, you want the crowd to be behind you. So I'm sure the lads going to be thinking about that. And I just touched on there: first tackles are important, first headers. Um, so yeah, that's what I used to do away from home. You want to quiet in their crowd and and try and turn them against them. But when you're at Carrow Road, you want the fans behind you. And you know the only way you can do that is by performing well, working hard. And the important making that first tackle, first headers, and uh, getting the crowd on your side. And yeah, it is, it is a big difference, a big, big difference. And there we have it. Three goal scorers from three different East Anglian derbies. Norwich City will be desperate to continue that and hopefully find themselves a new hero in Saturday's game. Meeting of the two of them at Carrow Road, arguably one of the biggest derbies for a little while. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, we'll have plenty of analysis, coverage and updates across the weekend across all of our channels. See you soon.